Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. Join the Discord. Got the community and I uh, got the study guys I'm working on on Patreon. So just uh, stay aware. Uh, we got a uh, very popular problem. Longest palindromic substring. Number five, one of the earlier ones. So given a string S, find the longest palindromic substring in S. You may assume the maximum length is a thousand. Okay, so we're given a me method and we want to find the longest palindromic substring. I would recommend doing a longest palindrome or finding if something is a palindrome first or doing some substring problems. This one's a little more advanced. Uh, we're going to be given a string and we're going to be looking for, well, first of all, if you don't know what a substring is, a substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within a string. For instance, the best of is a substring of it was the best of times because the best of is part of the best of times, right? A palindrome is a word that can be spelled the same way forward as backwards. Okay, um, so if we are looking for the longest palindrome, let's just... Um, should look at the examples here. The longest palindrome substring in this, a substring can be zero characters, it could be the whole string, it could be one character, it could be BA, it could be BAB, it has to be contiguous. So um, the longest one that is a palindrome this, that's spelled the same way forward as backwards is BAB, because BABA is not the same way forward as backwards, BABAD is not symmetrical and not the same way forward as backwards. So BAB is the longest palindromic substring. Uh, ABA is also a valid answer. So those are the only two. They're both size three, so retire, return either of them, right? Um, CBBD is, uh, when we look at CBBD, we are looking at, BB is the longest palindromic substring because these the C and D are not symmetrical. There's no way we could add those on, right? Um, so there's a few ways to for us to do this problem. Um, and there's a ton of YouTube videos doing dynamic programming, but there's a better solution I'm going to share with you here. And there's an even better solution than the one I'm going to share with you, but that one's not expected in an interview. So we're, when we look, the first way we could solve this problem is if we're given a string, it could be small or it could be big, like B-A-B-A-D. Um, we, if we want to find the longest palindromic substring, First thing we could do, brute force, whenever you go into an interview problem, maybe start off by thinking, what's the brute force? What's the worst way to do this? And then we can improve it. Well, the worst way to do this, if you guys didn't know, you can generate all substrings of a string in n squared time. And then you could uh, go through those and then we'd have to, uh, to check if a pr uh, string is a palindrome is also linear time. So it would be n squared times n, which is going to be O of n uh, cubed, which is pretty slow. We want to get down to n squared time complexity here. So the brute force time complexity is going to be O of n cubed, right? And um, I guess I could write brute force, right? And the way that we're going to do that is you just basically do a for loop through each letter. You do it, and then you have an inner for loop that for each letter it goes and it goes, okay, B is one. Um, we, we have an outer for loop that sees B, and then we go and have an inner for loop that goes, okay, uh, B A, okay, and then B A B, and then okay, B A B A, um, and then okay, B A B A D, right? And it generates all of the substrings for each specific character, and then it goes to A, right? It goes to A, and then it goes, okay, uh, A B, right? You know what I mean? And it keeps going all the way through. It generates all of these substrings, right? And then after, while it does that, it also has an inner, another loop that is checking whether, or you could have a helper method, but it's going to have to check whether each of these is a palindrome and it's going to have to keep track of which one is the longest. So that's a very slow solution. A better way to do this is one thing that you might notice about substring uh, palindrome is that um, there's two cases for palindromes. There's one case that is normal, right? ABBA, right? That's a normal case, right? And this is looking like, okay, we if we started from the middle of the string and we had pointers and we expanded outwards, we could say, okay, we'd have a left pointer and a right pointer and start at a middle point and we could say, is this B, is this B, are the, B, are the characters on both sides uh, the same? And then we can keep expanding our boundaries to the left and to the right and keep checking, right? Like if this was the string, 
Um, we could start here and we could say, we could have a left pointer at the middle and a right pointer at the middle. And we could say, okay, this B is equal to this B, this A is equal to this A and keep expanding until either the characters don't match anymore or we get to the ending of the boundary and we're going to go out of bounds and we can keep track of the length that way. So that's the way you're going to do it because that is the fastest way to do it in this problem. And there's another case though, where you have something like race car and you don't really start checking, um, you don't start checking the two characters at the same time because we would check like E and C or on one of the sides and that would be incorrect. So what we do is we check, um, the, we, ch we check, we start at the middle point and this is just a special case because in a palindrome, there could be that one character in the very middle that doesn't have a matching character. All of the characters have matching characters. This R is a matching character. This A is a matching character. The very middle one might not. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand from the middle and we're going to get this down to O of N squared. I'm going to write it out and then we'll kind of uh, go through. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write our expand from middle method. So it's going to be an in it's going to just return the length of the palindrome substring after we expand, right? So we could call it expand from middle or expand around center or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just going to take in a string s, a left boundary and a right boundary. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if S is equal to null or if left is greater than right, then the boundaries are messed up or the string is null, that's messed up. So we're just going to say zero. There's no palindromic substring to return here. Um, otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to have our loop and we're just going to say, like I said, if we're looking at ABBA, we start from the middle, we're going to have a pointer to the left side, like L would be equal to index one, right would be equal to index two in this string. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, while left is greater than or equal to index zero and right is less than or equal to S dot length. So the last index or not less than or equal to just less than, um, and the characters at those positions with those pointers, so s.char at left is equal to s.char at right. So if we're expanding from the middle and the characters keep being the same, then we're gonna remain in this loop and we're gonna keep expanding our boundaries. So what we do is we just decrement the left uh, pointer to keep going more to the left and the right pointer simultaneously to just expand it to the longest possible string where the characters continuously match and we keep we re it remains a palindrome when it breaks like I said that either means we find like in this case if we started here we'd see okay we got a B and a B as a match but um, then a C and an A don't match so we'd break out and what we want to do is we want to just return right because right is going to be the higher value minus left plus one because plus one because we're dealing with indices here, right? So this is gonna be just our method to take a string, expand from the middle of the string or from some point in the string and find a palindrome, right? Now, for the part where we just, okay, first we could do some checking at the actual method level. We can just say, okay, if S is equal to null or you know S.length is uh, less than one, then we're just gonna return an empty string. We're returning the longest palindromic substring. The, if it's an empty string or if it's less than one, then there's nothing, right? We're not returning a substring, right? Um, so then we're gonna have a starting and ending boundary. And this is going to be the boundaries which we grab a final substring at the end to return from. So we're gonna adjust these boundaries based on these palindromes that we find while we're looping, right? So now we're just gonna do a regular O of N loop through the string. We're gonna say I is less than S dot length and I plus plus, right? We're just looping through the string letter by letter. And what we're gonna do is handle those two cases. The case where we have the middle character, like race car, right? Where race car has that one special middle character that doesn't have a match. And then we're also gonna have to handle the case where it's just a regular palindrome, like ABB, AABBAA, -A -A, where the, every character has a match. So to handle those characters, we are going to check length one is going to be equal to a call to our method, expand from middle on S. Uh, which is just our string that we're given and we're gonna pass in the boundary of I. So the current index we're at, we're looping through each character. We're gonna call it on I and we're gonna call it on I again. So this handles the case where we start from a character and we wanna call it to start from the, we're gonna check against the same exact character. So when we do this check, 
um, when we pass in left and right, it's going to be the same character. So when we do s dot char at left is equal to s dot char at right, it's going to say is e equal to e, and then it's going to be a yes, okay, and then we expand to check c versus c. So that handles that case, and then we'll check. Um, lane two is going to be expand from middle except we're handling the second case where everything has a match so we can just do i and i plus one right because this would check b and then the i plus one would be the other b and we can expand from there um then all we want to do is we just want to keep the act the max of these lengths because we're looking for the longest palindromic substring so we'll just say okay length is going to be equal to math dot max of these two lengths whether we started from uh this point or whether we started from this point um, we're just going to say length one versus length two because um, one of these could be longer than the other because we don't know which case we're going to hit. So one of the cases is, could be correct and we're going to hit get a longer string from one of them. So we take the math maxes of those strings and then all we have to do is check. OK, sorry, we have to put an equal sign here. If lane is greater than end minus start, so if length is greater than the boundary of our substring we're going to get from our final string, that means we found, this is almost like setting a new max. This is like setting our boundaries for the new longest palindromic substrings. It means we found the new longer substring. So we'll adjust these boundaries. And we're gonna set start will become um, I, so the index that we're at, and the index we're at is going to be the center of a palindromic substring. So the start is going to have to be subtracting the length divided by two. The end is going to be adding the length divided by two. So, and we're dealing with index out of bounds and stuff like that. So we have to be careful here because we don't want the boundaries to go out. So we'll do I uh, minus, and then we're going to do length uh, minus one divided by two. So this will take that palindrome's length and the starting boundary will get set to the index, the middle of the, cause we're gonna be checking, like, you know what I mean? If we're returning, we found this, right? And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, length seven, right? And we're like, okay, we found a new longest palindrome. We returned that we found it at this index. Then we wanna take seven divide, divided by two and put our starting boundary to the left and then make um, our right boundary to the right. So we want to find those correct things, uh, indices. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's kind of it's kind of tough for me to explain. Um, and then this one's just going to be i plus length divided by two. And then uh, this is the way the reason we do the minus one is because of uh, index out of bounds. And then all we have to do here is just return s dot substring of our boundaries that we get in the end. Uh, n plus one. This is all just uh, index out of bounds, the plus one and the minus one stuff. So that's the whole solution. That is O of n squared compared to the dynamic programming where the dynamic programming has, um, um, what did we do wrong? All right, crap guys, my bad. It was just, I accidentally did uh, plus instead of minus because uh, I'm an idiot. So that was my bad. Uh, I really, I'm just going to edit this uh, together because I don't want to redo that whole thing. Sorry about that. But um, basically what happens, uh, just to recap one more time, I'm just telling you the solutions here. I don't think it's that hard to understand. Um, the brute force is n cubed because you got it. You would have a nested for loop and then you'd be calling um, to look if it's a palindrome. A better solution is dynamic programming, but that is out and there's a bunch of videos out there. I might do one. There's n squared time, n squared space. But this solution right here, expand around center, this is uh, n squared time and no, it's O of one space. Then there's a Manneker's, Manneker's algorithm, but it says you're not expected to know that. It's a lot harder to understand. This one's not that hard, I think. You're looping through you're checking for palindromes at each point you're looping through at each index so when you look at a string like race car you're gonna go r okay start at r and start at r plus one you know call this method twice on position zero and position zero and zero one and expand from those points and try and find the longest substring. And then you just keep a maximum as you go through because eventually you'll get to a middle point like E and you'll find the longest palindrome, right? And over, you just it just does one loop and then here's another, at worst case, another loop. And uh, that's N squared. And uh, I think it's pretty basic to understand. Nobody made a video on this, so I decided to. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry about that mess up at the end here. Um, 
So let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate everyone that uh, supports the channel. And uh, let me comment below what videos you want me to do next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.